morning and welcome to Ballinahenge Baptist Church Sunday morning online service. We are so grateful that you're here with us this morning on this Fathering Sunday. And as always, we're going to hear God's word. We're going to sing together and we're going to pray together. To start with, let's hand over to Natalie and sing How Deep the Father's Love. On this Father's Day Sunday, we have a lot to be thankful for. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, it says, See what great love the Father has lavished upon us, that we should be called children of God. Let's come this morning and remind ourselves how deep the Father's love for us. Regardless of our earthly father, Lord, we have one that will never let us down. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you've said that you can call us children of God, that you've lavished your love upon us. Lord, that love that took you to the cross in place of us, Lord, in, in our place, in our redemption place instead of us, Lord. We thank you that you took the sin and sorrow and you put it upon yourself, Lord, so that we can stand redeemed this morning as children of God. And we thank you for that. We thank you for your love. We thank you for all the goodness that you've given to us. And we thank you for your church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have a few announcements this week. Uh, Daniel Peters will be continuing with the live youth on Monday and that's at 8 o'clock. 
On Wednesday night, we have prayer and communion is also from eight. And on Friday night is the big family quiz, and that's from half seven. You can join these all through the app Zoom. Uh, you can go on 20 minutes earlier and have a wee chat with people before any of these meetings start. Uh, junior Church is also still continuing uh, through WhatsApp, and that's with Joe and Siobhan. The Balnehinch Churches Together COVID-19 helpline providing help for one is practical support and food bank, two money matters where to find advice, three someone to talk to or four if you have a prayer request and you can get any of that there or you can contact them on 0333 050 or if you know anyone who would like a DVD of the service or have any other requests, you can contact the Deacons at deaconsandbalnehinchbaptist.org. Now, I think we have a wee short video for Father's Day. You can say that again. Yeah, he's irreplaceable. <laughs> <laughs> Our story is not a secret. We were just little tiny babies. We didn't have water. We were fatherless. I don't really remember it very much. Me either. We were pretty young. But we were adopted into a loving family. Lord, we lift up to you again this morning, all of those who are unwell, or those who are in hospital, or at home waiting on results, or going through any type of treatment. We ask for peace for them and their families at this time, Lord. We give our thanks, God, for the fathers in our lives. For those who are fathers, we ask for wisdom and humility in the face of the task of parenting. Give them the strength to do well by their children and by you, Lord. For all fathers living or dead, those nearby or those distant by miles, disease or division, that they all may be embraced and strengthened by the loving arms of God, the Father of us all. In all of this, we get a glimpse of your per perfect sacrificial love for us, of your giving of yourself to the utmost of our sake, even when we deserve none of it, Lord. Father God, thank you for your perfect example. I praise you because you show all fathers how to love. 
I also want to pray for those who are fatherless today. Surround them with godly men to teach them and guide them. And above all, to love with the love of a father. In your strength and in your name and in your love. Amen. Now we hand back over to Natalie to sing Oh Praise the Name. Let's join together and sing Oh Praise the Name of the Lord Our God. This is a family favourite of ours, so join in and sing along. from Ephesians chapter 4 verses 7 to 16. But to each one of us 
grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. What does he ascended mean? Except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions. He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves, and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is, Christ. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. This morning we're back in Ephesians and we're looking at Ephesians 4 verses 7 to 16. Last time we saw that Paul develops two main themes in the remainder of the letter. Firstly, unity among believers and secondly, godly relationships. Verses 1 to 6 in chapter 4 gave an introductory statement embracing both of these themes and we saw five characteristics of the worthy life. Humility, gentleness, patience, bearing with one another and unity. Yet we're all different, aren't we, if we're honest? And we all matter to God. We're all valuable to him. So how is this unity maintained when there's diversity? The answer, I believe, must be in the reason for which the spiritual gifts are given. Verses 12 to 13. Spiritual gifts are given to equip God's people for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Now, pastors and teachers are to equip God's people for works of service. But we're all here to build up the body of Christ. We build each other up. This has become known as every member ministry, as opposed to one professional pastor or teacher doing everything. Joel 2 verse 28 puts it like this. God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. All of us have the one Holy Spirit in us. He gifts and empowers us to do God's will here and now. And the context is humbling, humbly serving God. Our gifts will draw attention to Christ, not ourselves. They will serve others, not us. They will honour our master, not us. For God's word, the Bible is his primary provision for spiritual growth and for maturity in Christ. Without knowing what the Bible says, we can easily be led in the wrong direction and even think of spiritual gifts in secular terms. God gives spiritual gifts to build us up, to develop our Christ-likeness. And 
that has to be centered around the word of God. Prayer too is essential in our spiritual growth. We do not know our own hearts and we must continually lay our lives at his feet, asking him to speak to us through his word and to show us our gifts and empower us to use them. We can begin with questions like, what do I like to do? What is enjoyable for me? Jesus said it was his constant delight to do the will of the one who sent him. Another question would be, what am I good at? I believe God wants to bless us at what we're good at, to hone our strengths. If God is blessing you in some service and you're seeing fruit for your efforts, you should pursue it even more vigorously. Thirdly, do ask other mature believers you know, with insight and wisdom you trust, to advise you on the gifts they observe in you. Often others can see our gifts quicker than we can see them ourselves. And we must be in the habit of talking with other believers and praying through the importance of what they say and their wisdom. In the church, God is developing wholeness or maturity in his children. The opposite is mentioned in verse 14. We will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Then Paul proceeds to speak on maturity once more and building up or growing up four more times. For Paul, God's chief purpose of the church was to mature, to grow up that each of us might contribute to the maturity by becoming spiritual adults. And the first overarching purpose is unity. He's recognized that there is diversity in the church, but the things that unite us are much greater than the things which divide us. Remember verses four and five, one body, one spirit, just as you were called to one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Therefore, we make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Verse 3. Maintenance there is the key. But in verse 13, unity is entirely different. Until we reach unity in the faith, he says, and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. This is something to be attained rather than maintained. It doesn't exist yet, but it's an expression of the full maturity to which church members should aspire. And there are two parts, unity in the faith and in the knowledge of God. The faith is objective, like we said earlier when we talked about one faith. The truth of the gospel is one truth. It's entrusted to the, God, the apostles and it's true for all time. The knowledge refers to our own experience of Christ through our day-to-day -day relationship. Philippians 3 verse 10, Paul says, I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and to participate in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. So it's more than head knowledge, but the heart is also involved in obedience and loving service to our Lord, King and Master. Jesus prayed, we know it well, John 17 verse 23, May they be one, Father as we are one. Back to verse 13, Paul says, attaining to the whole measure of all the fullness 
of Christ. So it's not just united and having an experiential knowledge, but also becoming increasingly like Jesus through our fellowship, our partnership, our communion with him. Ironically, that was the temptation that came to Adam and Eve. Satan succeeded in tempting them to doubt God's goodness, then question his word. But the clincher was for God knows what you eat, Satan said, and from it your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Genesis 3 verse 5. There was a lie there. But there's also a hint of truth, and Satan's very clever. I know they would know a difference between good and evil. That's true. Rather than knowing only good, their lives would never be the same again. The lie was that they did not become like God. Instead, they became like Satan, who not only knows what is evil, but also practices it. The irony is, before they fell, they were like God, made in his image. Yet that is what they lost when they give in to temptation. The good news is that this image can be restored progressively as believers grow more like Christ within the fellowship of the church. The signs of growth are the fruit of the Spirit, which we're all familiar with. Galatians 5, verses 22 onwards. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. But more than Christ-likeness as individuals, Paul is thinking about Christ-likeness as a collective body of believers to display the full character of Christ in our local community. Is that our longing and prayer for Bell and the Hinch? That non-church people would see the character of Christ in us together? The contrast is clear with verse 14. The infants, he mentions, tossed backwards and forwards by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning craftiness of people in their schemes, deceitful schemes. I love my children, my grandchildren, although you need a lot of energy to keep up with them. Two of the limitations are instability and naivety. By unstable, I mean they have a short attention span. They can be easily distracted, which is why parents have a special responsibility for their sound education and careful guidance in God's truth. Pray for all our parents. So Paul began with the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers. Biblical teaching is the best cure for immaturity. However, it's not truth in isolation. It needs to be spoken in love. Literally, truthing it in love. Love is the noun which needs to be emphasized. When we take away love from joy, you're left with a selfish reveling. Take away love from growing more like Christ and you have self-righteousness. Take love from truth and you're left with bitter orthodoxy. Take love away from mission and all that's left is colonialism. No longer seeking to win people to Christ. Take love from unity and you have ecclesiastical tyranny. But instead of subtracting love, we must express it openly for God the Father and for our Lord Jesus Christ, for the Word of God, the Bible, for fellow believers around us in the world. That's the mark of the true church. 
love for God leads to joy. Love for our Lord Jesus Christ leads to holiness. Love for the Word of God, the Bible, leads to truth. Love for our fellow believers leads to unity. And love for the world leads to mission. This growth is a process which takes time. Nevertheless, God is at work and we must trust him and be patiently obedient to his revealed will. Paul puts it like this in Philippians 1 verse 6. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it's relevant to us because we still need to mature. We still need to grow up. We still need to grow together. Forgive us for our selfishness forgive us for our distracted ways forgive us for our naivety at times that we can go it alone thank you for the reminder that we need to be deeply rooted in christ that we need to be showing our likeness to him that we need to be growing in our love and that your word needs to be our guide, not just in our unity, but also in our relationships with each other and our relationship with our community. Oh, Father, we do pray that you would be glorified in us, that we would be obedient to you, that we would honour you by our unity and that you would use us to bring glory and honour to your name. Speak, Lord, to us through your word and help us to obey your truth. And may this great work that you have started within us go on to maturity that we would be more and more like the Lord Jesus and more in harmony with you. For your glory we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let's join together now and sing Build Your Kingdom Here. This is a nice and lively one, so if you want to clap along or stamp your foot or whatever, join in. Build Your Kingdom Here. Come set you rule and reign our hearts again increase in us we pray unveil what we are made come set our hearts ablaze with hope like what were in our very souls Holy Spirit come invade us now we church we need your power in us we see your kingdom first we hunger and we thirst refuse to waste our lives for your our joy and prize to see the captives hearts released the hurt the sick the poor 
thank you that we can say build your kingdom here we thank you lord that the church is here on earth we're not a building we're not an institution lord but we're a group of people who are called by you who have been saved by you lord and who are alive and at work in this earth lord help us build this kingdom help us lord be workers for you lord in all that we do this week thank you for jesus thank you for all that you've done for us in jesus name we pray amen amen